Multi-line macros are more flexible. They help with code that is repetitive. For example, the code at the top of every function can be the same, so it can be defined in a macro this way. The number following the name of the macro specifies the number of arguments you can pass to the macro. In this case, it's zero. Then you can code the beginning of a function like this. And the resulting code, when the macro is expanded, looks like this. This macro has only two lines, but you can actually define a macro to be any size you'd like. Using a macro this way is just as if you had entered the text of the code. Here's a way to write a similar macro. This example accepts one argument. You can specify the number of bytes of local workspace inside the function. When you expand the macro, whatever you specify on the line will replace the percent %1 inside the macro. For example, say you want to write a function that will use four bytes. You write the code like this. The number specifies that four bytes of workspace is to be set aside for local storage inside the function. The code it generates looks like this. One thing I should mention, if you assemble a program with the expansion of a multi-line macro, you can get a warning message that you have a label without a colon on it on a line by itself, but that doesn't have any effect on the code generated. Everything worked okay. If you wish, you can use the command line flag described earlier to suppress such a warning message. You can define a macro to have as many arguments as you need. Here's an example of a macro with two arguments. When you expand the macro, you supply it with two variables, the names of two double word locations holding values that you need to have in order. The expanded code of the macro will swap them if necessary to make sure the smallest one is first. The first name is inserted in place of every percent %1, and the second name is inserted in place of every percent %2. For example, this line of code could be used. The expanded macro would then look like this. Now this works. The code will make sure that value 2 is greater than value 1, swapping them only when necessary, but there is a problem. This macro can only be used once in a program because it defines a label named ordered. What you need to fix it is the ability to define a label that is local to each expansion of the macro. And here's how you do that. If you specify the label name beginning with 2% signs, it becomes a local label defined locally inside the expanded macro. I don't know of any reason to define labels inside macros any other way. Doing it this way, you can use the same macro as often as you like with no collision on the labels.